here's one I can get it for you wholesale, starring Susan Hayward as Harriet and Dan Bailey as Teddy Sherman. <laughs> From Fifth Avenue to Maine, the big windows of the department stores are the showcase of the dress business. But the story of the dress business is in the New York garment center, half a mile square and two blocks high. The billion dollar dress capital of America. Built on a bolt of cloth and a foolish question, how do I look? The lives and fortunes of hundreds of thousands hang on the answer to that question. And this is the story of a few of them. A man named Sam Cowan, who manufactures dresses, and a fellow named Teddy Sherman who sells them. And, uh, oh yes, there's a girl, Harriet. They all work for the same company, Pulvermacher, Kelly, and Bikini. A few hours ago, the salesman returned from four months on the road, and he finally persuaded Harriet to have dinner with him. Oh, come on, Harriet, what's the matter? What's wrong? The minute I got into town, what did I do? Collected your expense account. Well, the minute after that. I sent you my love, didn't I? No, didn't you get the message? I refused delivery. You saw her, so I didn't tell you myself. Well, how could I? You were busy all day talking to Sam or modeling a line. Hey, how come you and Sam got so much to talk over all of a sudden? Just finish your coffee, Mr. Sherman. Uh, Miss Boyd, is this a nice way to treat a fellow who's been on the road for four long months? Has it really been that long? I never knew the time to pass so quickly or so pleasantly. Honey, I like the way you're fighting it, but you know, somehow you've gotten a very false impression of my character. You've got to open those beautiful eyes and see the real Teddy Sherman. And who would that be? Man of integrity, quiet charm, familiar with the arts and sciences, philanthropist, fortune. In short, everything you're not. Well, yeah, but everything I'd like to be. All I need is a girl like you to hold my hand and guide me. You just don't seem to realize I'm in love with you. What do you think? Proposal of marriage? Who knows, honey? In the meantime, just hold my hand. Oh, now, look, do something. Either squeeze back or honk like a horn. Why don't you just get the check? You know, I've been studying you all evening, and i got a question to ask. When do you come out of the deep freeze? You know, I've been studying you all evening, too. How much money do you have in the bank? How much money? You've got $3,300 coming to you in commission. How much more have you got in the bank? What kind of perfume do you use? Expensive. Why? Funny, I smell a rat. <laughs> I keep forgetting you're a comedian. Look, Miss Boyd. I was pushing a hand truck through the garment center while you were still punching for your gold pin in the diaper service. I know things about this business you'll never grow old enough to learn. But you fooled me. It took me until now to recognize the itch that you got. Well, suppose you tell me about me, Mr. Sherman. It sticks out all over you like a bad case of hives. Go on, you've got the blueprint. Read it. Sure. You're going to start a new dress firm and get rich, you think. You've been talking to Sam Cowan, a top factory man. I'm supposed to be the salesman, and somewhere else is another sucker, a designer. But what may I ask? Just exactly what have you got to contribute? Would you like to see? Yes, I sure would. All right, I'll show you. Take me home. You see this? This is an album. It's filled with pictures, designs of dresses. Have a look. Wait a minute. This is one of our dresses. This is our 807. That's right. They're all sketches of our dresses. Well, you've talked Bettini into coming in with you, too, huh? Poor Paul Vermarker, Bettini, and Kelly Incorporated. Nice from within. No Sam Cowan, the inside man. No Bettini, the designer. No Teddy Sherman, the star salesman. You're quite a little pusher, honey. These designs happen to be mine. That's huh? right, mine. It took me months to convince Bettini to use them under his own name. He did, and you know the rest. They just happened to be our best number. You? Me. Ah. Uh, All right, ask Sam, then. All right, suppose you are a designer, even a good one. While you go out into that jungle, they cut you up into little pieces. You think you know this business? Yes, I think I know this business. And I've learned it the hard way. I've worked days and I've studied nights. I've modeled those Seventh Avenue dogs while cheap salesmen and buyers from the West hit me all around the showroom. I've fought my way out of cabs, bars, and hotel rooms. But I've learned this business. It took a strong stomach, but I've learned it. And now I've got the best inside man there is, Sam Cowan. I'm the best designer, and you're supposed to be the best salesman. Tell me, Miss Boy, what do you dream about nights? Cadillacs? Duplex on Park Avenue? That's just what I dream about, all the time. Uh-huh. 
So now with my job, time and money, you want me to take a gamble and a racket? To... I thought I had brass, Miss Boy, but I'm not in your league. Exactly what I said to Sam. Not in our league. What did Sam and I said, though? They meant that type like pennies and billions. The all-American slob. You spent ten years selling other people's stuff, and there you stand. Teddy Sherman, 36 suits in the closet, each with a penny in the pocket, all adding up to 36 cents. Come on around for a job someday when you're broke. Oh, wait a minute, I've got something for you. Here, here's a dollar cab fare. The character analysis was for free. Good night, Mr. Sherman. Miss Boyd, you have the simple and astonishing beauty of an old-fashioned straight razor. How much cash have you got? Enough. Throw away the pipe. How much? Sam has 10000 I can raise 7500 How about you? The same. Interested? Bring it around in dollar bills and we'll talk. That's a deal. You uh, could make it official, you know. Sort of seal it with a kiss. Uh, why not? History will record this sacred moment. You offered him an apple and he lost his head. <laughs> Good night, Teddy. Say hello to your mom for me. I'll be sure to. <laughs> Go, Ma. He said to say hello. I, I heard you were telling him seven to five hundred dollars. Well, with what I've got in the bank, plus the insurance, you'll never lay your hands on it. Your father left it to me, Harriet, and I'm giving it to Marge when she gets married. Well, what about me? I'm a daughter too. You don't need it the way Marge does. You've got the looks and the talent to make money. Ma, that money's no good. It'll buy Marge four rooms, a cheap furniture, a washing machine, and a middle-aged spread. And what about you? When your father died, I gave up hoping for myself. Once I hoped for you, but you're a throwback to an Irish bandit in the hills of Killarney. I want to see Marge married to Ray. I want them to start out without worry. And what'll you do? Live a week with her and a week with me? A woman without money, without independence, without pride? Taking crumbs off some summer law's table? Is that what you want? Ma, with that $5,000, I can make you independent. You'll have plenty left over for Marge, and... Then she won't have to marry some poor snook like Ray, who'll spend the rest of his life almost winning cases in the court of small claims. With money, Marge can marry any man she wants. A nice outlook on life. It's the outlook that men taught me. Then some man will teach you it's wrong. Ma, please. The answer's no, Harriet. Oh, I'm so glad you came home early. Oh, what are you so excited about? How would you and Ray like to go to Bermuda on your honeymoon? Oh, great. Oh, you don't understand, Ray. I'm serious. Oh, it's the most wonderful meal. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hey, where's Mom? She went to bed. She's asleep, but she knows all about it. About what? Well, hold on to your hat, kid. They came to me. To me. Sam Callan and Teddy Sherman. They're going into business. They want me to be their designer. Our own business, Mark. And I'm going to be a partner. Oh, congratulations, Harriet. That's terrific. Oh, Harriet, it, it, it's what you've always dreamed about. A lot of our dreams are going to start coming true. Things Mom has always dreamed about. And you. That little place you and Ray want in Queens? One good season and I'll buy it for you. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. I couldn't let you do a thing like that. Oh, now, stop being proud with your practically sister-in-law. You can pay me back. The six percent of it will make you feel any better. <laughs> and I wasn't joking about that sister to meet her. Why don't you two kids get married, buddy? Well, the first thing I want to do is catch my breath. When did all this happen? Now, I'll give you all the beautiful details later. Only first, let's have a drink on it. Marge, go out in the kitchen and make us some coffee, huh? Too bad we just happened to be out of champagne. You know, Harry, you're, you're pretty wonderful. <laughs> don't waste your kisses on me, Ray. This is the wrong girl. <laughs> right if I give Marge a hand? Go on in there. I'll just sit down here for a minute and try to come down to earth. <laughs> Operator, I think this phone is out of order. Would you mind ringing me? What's the number, please? Skylar 47098. Will you ring it now, please? I will ring Skylar 47098. Thank you. It's all off. The whole thing. That was Sam Cowan. It's off? 
The bank says we need more cash. We'll just have to get a designer who can put up his share of the money. I'm... I'm sorry, kid. Oh, what a rotten break. You'll excuse me, won't you? No, no, just leave me alone, Mark. Good night, Ray. I'd give anything in the world if I could help her. Me, with less than 500 bucks in the bank. Ray, the insurance money. Oh, but that's yours, Mark. I couldn't even suggest it. Wouldn't be helping Harriet? We'd be helping ourselves. You know how your ma feels about that money. It's my money, Ray. She gave it to me. Harriet? Harriet, come back here. You get Sam Cowan on the phone right away. Tell him you've got your money. <laughs> How do you like them, Sam? The officers, the showroom. You haven't said a word. One word I can say. Scared. I'm scared, Teddy. What's the matter with you? Look at the orders I brought in. Orders are fine, Teddy, but flowers and plants in pots? Are we so rich we can afford to wish ourselves good luck? Sam, stop worrying. We're in. Hermione Griggs gave me an order that'll carry us for three months. You better write two orders. Maybe then we can pay for the carpets and fancy drapes. Teddy, why did we have to have such an expensive showroom? Because it sells dresses, that's why. And you know who's in the showroom right now? Artie Savage, the biggest account in the business. Savage is there, and you're in here? Let him wait. He's happy. He's looking the models over. The dresses, Teddy, or the girls? <laughs> Relax, partner. Our biggest order is about to fall of our lap. <laughs> Teddy, my boy, congratulations. A great lay A great. <laughs> you like it, huh, Savage? You good and hungry for a real great fall line? Well, you know me, Teddy. With this half of my head, I buy dresses. With this half, I... <laughs> well, uh, how about something out of that little black book of yours for dinner tonight? Yeah, huh? you're on. <laughs> now, take that little lady over there. Well, that one happens to be my partner. Uh, hey, Harriet. You got a minute, honey? Well, Mr. Savage, isn't it? Mr. Uh, Savage, meet Miss Boyd, our designer. Well, I'm delighted, I'm sure. Uh, Teddy sure can pick them even for partners. <laughs> and how he picks them even for customers. Now, look, Teddy, if she's your partner, she can tell me the whole line. Why shouldn't I enjoy my work? Eh? Tell him every number on the line, honey. Murder him. That shouldn't be difficult. I'm sure Mr. Savage is going to like everything he's got. Uh, if I like it with Sherman, I'm going to love it with you. <laughs> Oh, uh, Teddy, wait a minute. Yeah? Uh, about tonight, the grill at 8 o'clock. Right, the grill at 8 o'clock. Oh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. I've got your table ready. Yeah, the captain just gave it to me. Oh, I'm uh, expecting Mr. Savage. Tell him that the girl Mr. tonight... Mr. Savage is already here, sir. Huh? He's in the dining room with the young lady. Oh? Uh, look, uh, see that the girls at the table get a drink. Yes. I better have a word with Mr. Savage. Well, how are you, Teddy? Say, you know Miss Boyd, don't you? Yeah, we've met. Have any trouble closing the order, Harriet? No, no, very little. Greatest little designer in the business, only I wouldn't sign until she had the reward I had. Let's not talk business anymore. I'm hungry. Yeah. You hungry, Teddy? No, I always eat before I come here. What about our date? Well, I got a date. How did you better run along, Teddy? Your girlfriends will be waiting. You run along. I'm waiting for him, too. What? Do you think I pass up Miss I don't mind the details. Oh, look, Teddy, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. I ordered 1,500 pieces. She's a great salesman, your partner. Yeah, and she's cute, too. <laughs> yes, you like it. Yes, sir. She's going to take real good care of me. Why don't you shut up? Uh, what? Don't I what? Why don't you go Home? Home? Uh, you don't have to do this to get orders. Do what, darling? Spoon feed this drunk, that's what. I don't want you doing that. Now, just a minute, Sherman. You can't talk like this in front of a lady. Don't you take your buyers out, wine them, dine them, amuse them? That's different. How? Because I'm a man, and you're supposed to be a lady, that's why. How? It's different. How? I'll write you a letter. In the meantime, let's go. Now, look here, Sherman. This lady is in my That's company. just what I mean. This place is full of my friends. Now, let's go. Oh, you can't take a hint, can you, Teddy? Well, maybe you can understand. <laughs> Oh, that was great just now. That was just... He's long first, didn't he? Besides, I couldn't help myself. You know how I feel about you? Sure, I'm part of the Teddy Sherman circus. Patsy! Do you think I'd go into this business with you and Sam just for money? Even in my mind, ever since the first night we went out, I've begun to like it. The more I like it, the less I like to see you entertaining a buyer like a prize that comes in a box of crackers, Jack. You mean like yourself, don't you? And those lady buyers from the Southern Circuit? What kind of talk is that? You're the kind of a girl I could marry. Well, did you hear me? I'm proposing to you. 
What do you expect me to do? Throw my arms around you? When you marry someone, it'll be to rope her off while you go on playing the field. Can't you get it through your head? I love you. You love me. You mean you want to own me? I've worked and seemed to get a business started just so I could be free of men like you, so I could belong to myself. Harriet, listen to me. You love me so much that for the sake of that crummy male ego of yours, you're ready to take something I've worked for and dreamed about all my life and kick it right under a ballroom table. That's how much you love me. All right. I'll carry you back in there and dump you in Savage's lap. But that finishes it. I want out. Get yourself another partner. Oh, no. I've got a partner. You, the best in the business. And you're going to help me get rich. The contract signed, sealed, delivered, unbreakable. And you won't get out, never. So make up your mind to like it. See you in the morning, Mr. Sherman, bright and early. Act two of I Can Get It For You Wholesale, starring Susan Hayward as Harriet and Dan Bailey as Teddy Sherman. It's been said that for every 12 who go into business in the New York Garment Center, only one remains. Well, the new partnership seems to be that one out of 12, even though the two younger partners scarcely speak to each other. But tonight, Teddy Sherman and Harriet are making a special effort to be civil. It's the annual buyer's ball, strictly full dress, in New York's most exclusive hotel. On the dance floor, Teddy's met up with an old friend. Well, it's been a long time, Teddy. I thought you were dead. Yeah, it's all in your point of view. I'm in business for myself now. Yeah. Yeah, well, that is with two other partners. One of them's an angel. The other one's a love. And that was quite a speech your boyfriend made tonight. <laughs> How could he miss? J.F. Noble is the best touch of the most of you here ever had. Come on, I want you to meet my partner. I want to show you off to a certain. Well. Would you look at that? J.F. Noble with another girl? That doesn't bother me, Teddy. I'm not jealous anymore. The other girl happens to be one of my partners. Oh, the angel. No, not the angel. Looks like they're leaving, doesn't it? Ah, for that Harriet. What a sweet kid. I've never suspected that a buyer's ball could be so entertaining. I must thank the committee and apologize for putting them off all these years. And for running out so early in the evening. I want to drive it home. I want to talk to you. What about, Mr. Noble? Well, among other things, your gown is lovely. Thank you. Where did you get it? Well, I designed it myself. You see, I'm one of those children you mentioned in your speech. One of the children in the 1095 line who wants to receive the mecca of gowns, as at Noble. I did use that phrase, didn't I? <laughs> In my position, I find that the only people who ever remember what I say are those who uh, want something from me. Well, what's wrong with that? What you have is what people should want. Well, I'm not objecting. I know that you left your partners without an excuse or even a good night. Why shouldn't I? Well, usually when, when men have beautiful women for partners, pleasure and business get mixed up. Well, in our partnership, our only pleasure is business. Then you need a change. Either your point of view or your partner's. Good night, Miss Ford. Good night, Mr. Noble. You got a minute, Harriet? What are you doing back here? I thought you had some buyers in the showroom. Take away for a minute. Sam's talking and buying Ponzi's. It's a smart deal. We're getting the fabric for next to nothing. It's a mistake. Why? Ponzi's an old-fashioned material that won't sell. You're the salesman. Make it sell. Let's see the design. They're not ready yet. I've, I've got to get some special sketches out. Why special sketches? You're supposed to be finishing the spring line. Unless, of course, it's all too dull since you got your claws into J.F. Noble. See my fingers? Not blood, Mr. Sherman. Just in. Very funny. But I still want to know... Harriet, Mr. Noble. Mr. Noble is here. J.F. Noble. Well, well. The mountain has come to my habit. Come right in, Mr. Noble. Good morning. Hello. Oh, Mr. Noble, this is my other partner, Teddy Sherman. Teddy, Mr. Noble. Well, if we're going to be formal, Harriet, I'm Mr. Sherman, you're Miss Boyd, and our visitor is Mr. Noble. But if we're not, I'm Teddy Sherman, you're Harriet Boyd, and you're Mr. Noble. <laughs> if anyone wants me, I'll be at my club. 
I waited for you to call me, Harriet. And when you didn't, I did. Is this your string line, these sketches? They're part of it. Very nice. Did I bore you? Oh, no. Then why didn't you press your advantage? I didn't know I had one. Well, here I am. What's this get? This? That's just easy. Hmm. Would you care to have lunch with me and, and go to a fashion show? Oh, I'd love to, but I'm so busy. That sketch isn't bad at all. You should do it more often. Well, I might if I'm encouraged. Miss Boyd, <clears throat> do you believe in hunches? No. Well, I do. I have a hunch that you and I should have a serious talk. Oh, I believe in that. I want you to look at some of our sketches. My designing staff is very proud of them. I'd love to see them. Tonight? Or will you still be busy? Oh, tonight will be fine, James. Yes, I thought so. Coffee's getting cold, Harriet. Now, you just put those sketches down for a moment. We can, uh... I've switched a few of these ideas around. I hope you don't mind. I expected them to be switched around, and I also expect them to be improved. Well, we'll know about that in a minute. Yes. You're a fabulous girl. Not the least nervous, are you? Nervous? Why? Should I be? Well, your work is about to be judged by, if you'll forgive me, J.F. Noble. Now, uh, don't you care whether I like them or not? I care very much. Then you're sure I'm going to? No. I'm just sure that it's good. Well? Why did you change this one? I was quite pleased with that design the way it was. But it was beautiful, but impractical. The only place a woman could wear a gown like that would be in a perfume ad. I still like it. Any man would. But any woman would know that you couldn't sit down in it. Uh, don't you approve of what I've done to you? I approve highly. Thank you. But the sketch is incomplete. Now, if I may have the pencil. I'm, uh, adding a signature. Harry? Of Noble. Harry, of Noble. Do you like the way it sounds? Yes, I like it very much. Do you mind if I speak frankly? You going to say something disagreeable? Absolutely. I'm going to say that if you think I'm interested in you personally, you're wrong. But I know what you need and what you want. Now, with my help, you can jump from that 1095 business of yours to the top of your profession. It's exactly what I want. The offer's open. But I have two partners in an unbreakable contract for five years. You'll find a way to break it. May I use this design? It's a present. Thank you. You know, Jay, if we're going to work together someday, you you should be entirely frank with me. Well, wasn't I? No. You are interested in me as well as my talent. Well, suppose I am. Why did you deny it? Because it uh, might complicate things for Harriet of Noble. Well, I'm complicated. And I'm simple. I only know what I want. I think we both know what we want. The offer's still open, Harry, but it won't be forever. I guess the next move's mine, then, isn't it? Yes, Harry, the next move is yours. Harry, please, for heaven's sake, not so loud. There's a fire in the total. Don't you tell me to be quiet. I'm not going to stand for it. Sam, if you people don't want me in the company, you can come out and say so and stop conspiring against me. You're sick, Harriet. You don't know what you're saying. I've slaved over those sketches. What do you think I've got to work with making a dress for 1095? And when I finally get something, this is what you do with it. Please, Harriet, if something is wrong, This I... is not the dress I designed, and you know it. It's a nightmare. What right have you got to make changes without my permission? But, Harriet, I made it just exactly like... All right, everybody, get back to work. This is my side, Joe. Okay, now what's going on? Stop yelling at Sam. I suppose this change in my design was your idea. What design? This, this, this. Are you crazy? If what kind of performance is it? Here, go ahead. And if you two don't like what I'm doing, I'll just get out. I don't like how you sound. I don't like the tone of your voice. I want you to treat people around here as though they were almost as good as you are. Do you understand? So like right, Teddy. If the person doesn't feel good, it's the sickness that talks. Not the person. It's all right. Oh, Sam, I'm sorry. I'm just all on it. I made the dress exactly like her sketch. What exactly? But every two minutes now, she changes her mind. I open my mouth and bang, the house falls on me. I think I'll have a long talk with our friend right now. Terry, no more yelling, please. I don't yell when I'm serious. She's a high-strung girl, Terry. Oversensitive. 
So what are we, elephants? Come on, Harriet, let's get out of here. Let's take a walk in the park. No, I'm going home to bed. I have an awful headache. A walk in the fresh air will help. Nothing will help. Don't be too sure. Come on. Let's get you. Sometimes you forget there's such a thing as fresh air in New York. Or other things in the world besides business. <sighs> now it's your turn. Go ahead. Three. What's killing you, Harry? Me. How come? Overworked, overtired, over eager, over ambitious, over worried. I'd like to forget I ever wanted to be a designer. I'd like to forget I ever wanted to be rich. Why? It's the pressure. Will the designs be good? Will they sell? Will we go broke? I can ruin the whole business in one week. I don't sleep at night. I hardly slept in... I don't know how long. Have you seen a doctor? We're practically married. Oh, what did he say? He told me to quit. I told him I couldn't. It looks like I have to. I'm used to anyone this way. That's right. I used to think my sister Marge was a dope. The way I got that money out of it. What it? money? Never mind, it's all paid back. And with interest. But Marge is happy. She's got her little house in Queens. I'd like to quit, but what about you and Sam? What about, about me and Sam? Let's talk about me and you. No. Why not? I don't want to. Harriet. Look, think... you stay here and breathe. I'm going home. There's only one suggestion I can make. Throw me out of the company? Worse than that. What could be worse than that? You could marry me. How could you possibly want me to marry? Sounds crazy, doesn't it? I never stop thinking about it. And don't think I haven't tried. I can't tell if what you're doing is right or wrong, and what's more, I... <laughs> what are you crying for now? Because I'm crazy. That's why. Look, you go home and stay there. Forget the business. I'd burn the place down if I thought it'd make you happy for one minute. I don't want to be happy. I'm a fast-talking salesman from 7th Avenue, honey, but you make me feel like a boy in love. Well, get me a cab, boy. I want to go home. I'll take you there. No. I want to go home by myself. I've got a lot to think about. Okay. I'll go find a cab. not so easy to understand. First you and Harriet don't talk to each other, then you scream at each other. Now you're telling me you asked her to marry you. Well, what did she say? She didn't say no. She's all upset, Sam. But I got an idea. I'll tell her we decided to give her a trip. Let her go to Paris. See the spring showing. You know how she dreams of those things. No, she dreams all that. I'll pay for her, but we'll tell her it's the company. As soon as I finish my sales trip, I'll fly over, meet her, we'll have a good time, get married, be back in time for next season. The company will pay for it. No, yes. I'll pay for it. You think her happiness and yours isn't my business? She's home now, Sam. Just kicking herself to pieces. I, I think I'll go and tell her. Tell her all the partners I'll agree. Well, go on, Captain Over, before she wakes up and knows what a bad bargain she's getting. You could come with me, you know. Get out of here and let a man go to work. <laughs> Yeah, hold it, will you? Thanks a lot. And Miss Boyd's a part of it. What floor is she on? Fourth floor, but nobody's home. Are you sure? Miss Boyd just went to the hospital. A hospital? Uh huh. Her daughter was just taken there. Where? What hospital? Midtown. She huh. just left. Thank you. Teddy, what are you doing here? What happened, Mrs. Boyd? Was it bad? Oh, Teddy, is it wonderful? It's a boy. What? Marge is doing just wonderfully. Why, she wasn't in the delivery Marge. room. Oh. <laughs> well, congratulations, Grandma. Wait, that's, that's Ray coming out of her room down there. You can see her now, Ma. Oh. Just for a minute. <laughs> hey, Teddy. <laughs> well, how about this, huh? If I had a cigar, I'd give you a cigar. <laughs> well, here, I'll give you a cigar. <laughs> is Harriet in there with her? Harriet. Her own assistant. She couldn't even wait for the baby to be born. A dinner date. That's more important. Ma, a dinner date with who? Well, who do you think? Skip it, Ma. No, don't skip it, Ma. A dinner day with who? With Mr. Noble. What happened to her, Teddy? I used to think that maybe you and uh, Mrs. Boyd, go on, go on into Marge. 
Say hello for me. Well, that's how it is. I'm sorry, Jay, but, well, that's how I feel. I've decided to stay put. Having wounded my vanity, both as a man and as a... What did they call me? Oh, yes, a merchant prince. Would you mind telling me just why you changed your mind? Well, it's very simple. You're very attractive and change your offer, but I think I can get more out of my own business. It'll take longer, but I'll have myself, for instance. And let's not fight that young partner of yours. You'll have him, won't you? Yes. And I'll have all of them. I see. Do you mind if I keep that sketch? I gave it to you. I'm uh, going to have it framed with a motto underneath. Never underestimate the competition from 7th Avenue. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? Oh, yes? Yeah? On his way up. No, no, no. Don't try to stop him. We have an uninvited guest. Or was he invited? Your partner. My partner? Mr. Sherman. Oh, I'm sorry, Harry, but it would have been stupid of me not to let him come up. After all, he must know that you're here. Of course. We don't have to let him in. Let him in, Jay. Let's get it over with. This is an act three of I Can Get It For You Wholesale. Starring Dan Daly as Teddy Sherman and Susan Hayward as Harry, with Herbert Butterfield as Sam Cowan and Herbert Dean as J.F. Noble. It's a moment later. Teddy Sherman has just entered Mr. J.F. Noble's apartment. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Noble, but this will only take a minute. I'm glad to see that Dr. Noble has a cure for what ails you, Harriet. Let me pour you a martini, Mr. Sherman. I'm not here for a party. Only to take back a few things I said to my partner this afternoon when we... Oh, I see that you're interested in that skip. I'm more interested in what's written on it. Harriet of Noble. Teddy, listen to me. Listen to you. I want to tell you something, Mr. Noble, that Harriet once told me. She'll never get out of our deal. She's going to stick and make me rich and make our company a success. Teddy, wait. You'll design overalls if I want you to. You're going to like it. You lied, cheated, and double-crossed your way out of a model's room into a partnership with me and Sam. And now you're lying, cheating, and trying to double-cross your way into something better. Well, you can stop trying, honey. You're stuck. Well, stop screaming like a 7th Avenue I know a 7th Avenue salesman, but I'm nobody's petty. Not even Harriet. Harriet of Noble. You mean Noble's Harriet. And I won't tell Sam about your dirty little scheme. He likes it. Might break his heart. Yeah. That contract he's talking about. You still think you can get me out of it? He loves you. But he wants to own you because he's a man who has nothing. I have everything. And all I want to share my pleasure in is you. Can you get me out of it? Yes. He'll be on the road for maybe six weeks. You didn't even say goodbye, did you? Sam, about these sketches for the new line. I you... can't stand such a thing. Two partners not talking to each other. Sam, please. The sketches. All right, all right. But I tell you, Harriet, I... These are not dresses, Harriet. These are designed for gowns. That's right. A gown for ten ninety five? You're crazy. Our prices are going up, Sam. This is impossible. We're a ten ninety five house. We're making a new line, Harriet Boyd Original. They'll make us a fortune. You do this without Teddy here, without him even knowing. I won't let you have it. No, you can't. What do you want me to do? Get down on my hands and knees and beg him to talk to me? We're in business to make a profit, aren't we? By doing a crazy thing like this? The Harriet Boyd line's just been guaranteed a profit of $50,000 for the first season. $50,000? Yes. I never want to see anything for ten ninety five again as long as I live. <laughs> Naturally, Teddy, uh, naturally. I'll phone you again tomorrow, Sam. 
I'll be in Dallas. Take care of yourself, Teddy. Thank you. More orders. It's no use, Harry. We've got to tell him. Every day we're in worse trouble. <laughs> This is great trouble if you can get it. Teddy keeps sending in orders and we can't fill them. Sam, listen to me. In four weeks, we've jumped from a cheap little dress business into a gown house. We have the nine noble stores as a client and a future as millionaires. Is that trouble? No, that's not trouble. <laughs> well, relax, Mr. Millionaire, and be happy. When Teddy gets back, I'll try and be happy. Teddy Sherman is marching through the south, but believe me, the big battle will be on 7th Avenue. <laughs> Mr. Sherman, I'm not here. Tell him I... All right, all right, I'll talk. Hello, Teddy. Sam, how are you? How I am, I don't have to tell you long distance. Well, what goes with those orders I'm sending in? I'm getting complaints. Well, doing what we can. But I promised delivery to Greg. She said she wired you and all she got was double talk. Teddy, uh, Teddy, now no, wait. I can wait, but Greg won't. She just threatened to cancel. You better come home, Teddy. Come home? Why? Because that's why we we have a little problem. A little problem. Well, when you're here, it's time enough to talk. Okay. I'll catch a plane tomorrow. Send me a wire, Teddy. I'll meet you at the airport. I thought I'd better come over and tell you, Jay. Teddy Sherman's coming home tomorrow. Well. It seems to me that you could resign yourself a little more gracefully to being rich and famous. What if he is coming home? I keep wondering what he's going to say when Sam tells him. If Mr. Sherman doesn't like what you've been doing, you can tell him that every Harriet Boyd original, as ordered by the nine noble stores, will be returned and the orders canceled. That will bankrupt your little company, and you'll be free next season instead of this one. Either way, you'll be at noble. Really, Harriet, you and Mr. Sherman have no choice but to accept. And grow rich. I suppose so. Just stop thinking about it. Think about this instead. Advertising layouts for the newspapers and the magazines. Office Bazaar, four full pages. And, and, and here's that picture of you that we're running in vogue. Well, I'll say this for you, Jay. You certainly really keep your promises right down to the last, most extravagant part of them. There's something else you might like to see. The steamship ticket. Tomorrow night, Harry. By this time next week, you'll be comfortably settled in Paris. You'll be going to Paris every season. You're going to be very, very happy. Am I? I've mapped out the plans for your whole life. All you've got to do is to follow them. I don't know which follow other people's plans do. It's an old habit of mine. To get you out of that partnership, I'm doing a few things that violate some of my old habits. But I'm not complaining. So long as we understand each other, we do, don't we? Yes, we do, I just a little tired, that's all. A little itchy. We could skip dinner tonight if it's rather late. Oh, no. No, I want to go out to dinner. I can rest in Paris. Rest on the boat, my dear. No one rests in Paris. Oh. you must have so many other things to do. And where's Noble waiting for you on the boat, Teddy? Please. I've only got one thing to say. When we started this business, I told you I'd make you rich. Well, I've delivered on my promise. I always do, don't I, Sam? Oh, great. If there's one thing about Harriet Boyd, she's a girl who delivers. Anywhere, anytime, any price. I don't see you turning down any of the dirty money. Look, partner, I know when I'm in a squeeze place. There's no contract on the order. If I kick no, we'll pull the plug and our whole company goes down the drain. Bankrupt. And you're free to go ahead with him. You get what you want anyway, it's plenty. I can't stop you, so I won't even try. I learned that lesson the first time five guys ever jumped me in a dark alley. Well, enjoy feeling sorry for yourself. You can afford it. I got a surprise for you, Harriet. We decided not to afford it. You turned this whole thing into dirt, but Sam and I don't like dirt. We don't like living in it. Sam. You heard me. We're not delivering on the Harriet Boyd original. We're stopping production. We're closing down. Broke, flat, finished. Get it? 
Every dime we own or ever hoped to own. Out of business. Bankrupt. You can't. I won't let you. You're going to deliver on those orders. The money's there. It's waiting for you. Well, it'll grow old and gray waiting for us. You wrecked our little dress business, and now we're going to wreck your big gown business. We're finished because we don't like what you've done. Sam, no. Don't let him. Don't let him talk you into this crazy thing. He just wants to humiliate me, but you'll lose everything. Every penny you've ever saved. Sam, you have a wife, a daughter. He's got nothing. He doesn't care. He just wants to make me feel like... Like what you are. Like what you always were. That kid is such a fool. Always saying the wrong thing. He was just bluffing. He was, wasn't he? He was just trying to scare me. Damn. No, Henry. He didn't say what he wanted to say. That we both love you. I like a father and Teddy like Teddy. You know him, a beat a low, a joke, a laugh, but with his heart, with his heart. We are going bankrupt. We're closing up, even though it means the end of all our hope. But not because we hate you. Teddy is right. When it comes to choosing between money and someone you love, what choice can a man make? to go back and make them deliver. You can do it through the bank, through the mills. You can force them to. But why should I? Why? Don't you understand what I'm saying? They've deliberately decided to go bankrupt. Well, if they think they can afford the gesture, let them. I don't know. Now, shall we rejoin our guests? Please. You won't do anything? Certainly not. I'll not make Mr. Sherman's solvency the basis of our relationship. If you can't be happy with me, unless Mr. Sherman is happy, too. That has nothing to do with it. It's so simple, my dear. If you want to prevent Mr. Sherman's bankruptcy, all you have to do is go back to him. Go back to him? But you haven't much time to make up your mind. Do you want me to go back to him? No. No, I want you to stay. But I have no intention of spending the best years of my life playing psychoanalyst to, to a woman who won't admit she's in love with another man. Me? In love with that big baboon? That loudmouth salesman with his lady buyers and his cheap wife tracks and his... Your description is a trifle cruel, perhaps. But that's the man I mean. That's ridiculous. I only want you to do this because they have every penny they own as a... Unfortunately, Harry, if you want so many things, you want to get out of a cheap dress house into a bright and shining career of note. I arranged that. Now you want luxuriate and a happy conscience as well. That, I'm afraid, cannot be arranged. I was happy to help you find fulfillment. But I feel under no obligation to find fulfillment for the man you love. I don't love him. So you keep saying. Of course, I can understand your reluctance to crawl back on your hands and knees. You'll probably insist on that, you know. And with some justification. But crawling on one's hands and knees is good for the soul sometimes. So if Mr. Sherman is the one you want, I suggest you start crawling. I don't want him. Very well, then. Let's leave Mr. Sherman to the bankruptcy court. Say goodbye to our guest. Jay, I'm sorry. I'm not failing. I'm sorry too, Harry. I'll send you a postcard from Paris. <laughs> I may not... Harry! I'm back, sir. Why, the noble catch is going through his pockets and have you thrown off the boat? <laughs> no, not exactly. He told me that I was in love with you. That's why he wouldn't let me stay. Because I was in love with you, he said. What about you? What did you say? I said, me? 
In love with that big baboon, that cheap salesman, that... Uh, I forget now what I said. I don't forget so easy. I haven't forgotten a thing. Teddy, wait. Listen to me. Maybe Seventh Avenue is a jungle, but that doesn't mean that you have to live like a wild animal. Harriet found that out, so she came back. It isn't easy to walk back in after you walk out. It's easier to stay out and carry it. It isn't easy to say, please come back. Besides, falling in love is always a mess. What can you expect from two strangers? Let me at least introduce you. Teddy, this is Harriet. Harriet, this is Teddy. Please meet you. No, no. First is shaking hands. What you're doing, that comes later. 